In this video, we're going to find the volume of cylinders. So let's start by making sure we understand the different parts of a cylinder. First, every cylinder has two bases, and each base is shaped like a circular face. So no matter which direction the cylinder is facing or how it's sitting, the base will always be one of the circular faces. Next, let's make sure we understand that height of a cylinder, and the height is simply the distance between those two circular faces. So here I've labeled the height of each of these cylinders. It's important to know those parts so that we can correctly use the formula to find the volume of a cylinder, which says that the volume equals B, or capital B, times H. Notice that big B, or capital B, stands for the area of the base. So if we just said that in a cylinder, the base is a circle, we'll calculate the area of the base using the formula for the area of a circle, or pi r squared. Once you've calculated the area, then you'll multiply it by the height of the cylinder. So let's try some examples. Find the volume of the cylinder to the nearest tenth. We'll always start by writing out our volume formula, big B, or area of the base times height, and again, if the base of a cylinder is a circle, we find the area of a circle using pi r squared. So what I'll do is I'll rewrite this formula, and instead of b, I'm going to actually put the formula for the area of the base. Then multiply it by the height. So the nice thing about a formula is we just have to substitute in the values that we know. So we are going to have pi times r squared. We know the radius is 6 and then times h, and here the height is 22. I want to point out that when I calculate these, I'm going to be using the pi key on a calculator, so just know that if you're using 3.14, your answers will be similar, but a little bit different than mine. When I multiply those values, the volume of this cylinder is 2,488 and 1 tenth, and then our units with volume are always going to be cubic units or to the third power. So now try the one at the right. Find the volume of the cylinder to the nearest tenth. So we'll write our formula. Instead of the capital B, I'll put the area of a circle formula. And then we can substitute in all of our values. The radius here is 3, so 3 squared. And the height is 7. When I multiply through, we find that the volume of the cylinder is 197 and 9 tenths, and that'll be centimeters cubed. A couple more. So find the volume of this cylinder to the nearest hundredth. So here's our formula, area of the base times the height. The area of the base is pi r squared. You always want to look carefully at your cylinder because this time they gave us the diameter, which is 8 feet, but in our formula we need the radius. So if the diameter is 8, the radius is half of 8, which would be 4 feet. So now we can substitute pi times 4 squared times the height of 7 and 5 tenths. Multiply through, and the volume is 376 and 99 hundredths, and that'll be feet cubed. Okay, now look at the right. It says to find the volume of the cylinder, this time in terms of pi. So start, as always, with our formula. Pi r squared times the height. Okay, again, this cylinder has labeled the diameter, so if the diameter is 14, we know the radius is half of that, or 7. And the height is 30. Now here's where in terms of pi makes this last step just a little bit different. In terms of pi means that we actually want to leave pi in our solution. So I'm going to leave it alone, but we do want to multiply everything else. So if we multiply 7 squared times 30, that gives us 1,470, and that is in terms of pi. So we're going to write pi at the end. Our units would be millimeters cubed. 
All right, so let's apply volume to a real world situation. Here it says that a swimming pool is shaped like a cylinder with a radius of 15 feet and a height of six feet. If one cubic foot holds seven and 48 hundredths gallons of water, how many gallons of water can the swimming pool hold? Round to the nearest tenth. I'm gonna start by drawing what they described. So the pool is a cylinder. The radius is 15 and the height is six feet. They also gave us a conversion here that I'm gonna write out. They said that one cubic foot, so that's just one foot cubed, is equal or holds seven and 48 hundredths gallons. If they're asking how many gallons this pool can hold, then we wanna find first the volume of the pool. Let's go over here and write out our work. So the volume is the area of the base times the height. Filling in what we know, the radius is 15 and the height is six. Okay, when we multiply through, the volume of the pool is 4,241 and 15 hundredths cubic feet. So go back and think about this conversion. If every cubic foot holds seven and 48, and 48 hundredths gallons, then we wanna take the number of cubic feet in the pool and multiply it by seven and 48 hundredths. If we do that, then the answer to the question is that the pool can hold 31,723 and 8 tenths gallons of water. All right. For our last problem, it tells us a cylindrical vase is filled with soil. If the height of the vase is 6 centimeters and the vase holds 471 cubic centimeters, what is the diameter of the vase? This time use 3.14 for pi. So again, let's draw what we know. The vase is a cylinder. The height is six centimeters. And then it holds 471 cubic centimeters. So that's an indicator that they're giving us our volume. It holds 471 cubic centimeters. The question is asking for the diameter. So I'm gonna label that we're looking for D. We're gonna start the same way, which is by writing the formula. So when in doubt, write down the formula. And then as we've done in the previous problems, we're going to substitute in any variable that we know. So starting with V, we know the volume, so we can write 471 in place of V. We know that for pi, they want us to use 3.14, so let's write that here. We don't know the radius, so I'm gonna leave that alone as R squared. And we know the height is six. So let's start solving for r, and I'm gonna multiply everything on the right that I can. I can multiply 3.14 times six, which gives me 18 and 84 hundredths times r squared. We wanna undo this multiplication, so divide both sides. That will cancel the value on the right, and then on the left, it's gonna give us 25 equals r squared. So right now, stop, I'm gonna write the variable on the left, because it's easier for me to think about it this way. Some number times itself equals 25. Well, the inverse of squaring a number is to take the square root. So the radius is the square root of 25, which is five. And then we have one last step because they asked for the diameter. So if the radius is five, the diameter is twice that, or 10 centimeters. All right, well, you just found the volume of cylinders. Great work. I'm gonna show five extra practice problems. So if you would like to work through those for practice, feel free to pause the video on these next two screens.